All right. Today I want to talk about the parable of the sower and the seed. The parable of the sower and the seed. And we're going to be looking at Mark, the fourth chapter, the first 20 verses. If you want to look up in your Bible. Mark, the fourth chapter, the first 20 verses. The parable of the sower and the seed. As you listen to this today, I want you to think about people that you know. that Maybe they fit into one of these different uh, kinds of soil that we're talking about as a seed. And you'll understand as I read and go through this what I'm talking about. First verse, it says, And again Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him were so large that he got into a boat and he sat out on the lake. While the people were along the shore of the water's edge, he taught them many things by parables, and his teachings said, and his teaching said, Listen, a farmer went out to sow a seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants, so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and grew and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even a hundred times. Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and others were around him and asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seen but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The farmer sows the word. Some people are like the seed along the path. Where the word is sown, also soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like the seed sown on rocky places, hear the word, and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seed sown among them, hear the word, but their worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke the word making it unfruitful. Others, like seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accepts it, and produces a crop 30, 60, and even a hundred times was sown. A parable was a story that Jesus used as a figurative language. It is a comparison. It was like storytelling. He was, he was trying to just tell them a saying and, and a story, and he would do it in comparisons where they could understand. Now, there are three elements to this parable. They are the sower, the seed, and the soils. Without the sower, there would be no sowing and no fruit or no harvest, in other words. An example would be a farmer. Now, a farmer, he has to know his land. He has to know the ground and the dirt. And he knows exactly where the most fertile soil is to plant his seed. And he goes there and he plants the seed. And he knows how deep to plant the seed. And he plants the seed very deep where it needs to be. So it will go and get roots. Once the farmer's done that, 
He waits upon the rain to come, and then he waits for the sun to shine upon the sea for it to take new life. You see, he's done all he can do. He's totally dependent upon the rain and the sun. In the same way, we are totally dependent upon God. Once we have planted the seed, the word in someone's heart, that they need to be saved and they need to have Jesus Christ in their life and they can be forgiven of their sins and they can go to heaven once they've done that. Once the seed has been planted, it is totally up on, not us, upon the Lord. You see, because maybe we are the ones that plant the seed and somebody else comes along and waters and then somebody else is the one that enjoys the harvest. But the rains come and then the sun must shine. The sun is Jesus Christ that shines upon the people's heart in their life. And when they do that, their life is changed. The emphasis in the parable is upon the seed and the various kinds of soil. God shows us that he is like the soil. He shows us that. Now, when this, this parable first started, they were, they were there by the, by the side of the bank. And Jesus was ready to start teaching them this story or this parable. And the crowds began to push him back all the way to the water's edge. So what he did, he went out into the boat where he could talk to them. And he used the boat like a pulpit, in other words. And the crowds got right on the water's edge and they tried to listen. And no matter how hard they tried to listen, you know, they may have eyes that could see, but they could not see what Jesus was really trying to tell them. They had ears to hear with, but they couldn't quite understand the message that he was trying to, to relay to them. But when they were by themselves a little later, those close to Jesus and the twelve, they asked Jesus about the stories. And he told them that he had been, that they had been given insight into God's kingdom. He said, you know how this works. Don't you understand my stories? All of my stories work the same way. The farmer, he plants the word. Some people are like the seed that falls on the hardened soil of the road. No sooner do they hear the word than Satan snatches away what has been planted in them. And some are like the seed that lands on the gravel. When they first hear the word, they respond to it with great enthusiasm. But there is such shallow soil of characters that when the emotions wears off and some difficulties arise, arise there is nothing to show for it. The seed cast into the weeds represents the ones who hear the kingdom news, but they're overwhelmed with worries about the things that they have to do and all the things that they want to get. The stress, it strangles what they have heard and nothing comes of it. But the seed that is planted on the good earth represents those who hear the word and embrace it and produce a harvest beyond their wildest dreams. Now, folks, we're going to have people that will come here to this church and they'll join. We'll have people that will attend it. And, and they will try to listen. They'll try to, to understand what God is saying. And they just won't quite hear or see what God can do. They won't have enough faith. They won't plant the seed deep enough into their heart to, to follow God. And they'll go out by the wayside. And God knew that there would be many who would do that. But then there will be some that the seed will be planted deep within their heart. And they will become faithful serving the Lord all the days of their life. But we are to minister to any and everyone regardless. What a persistent and abundant sower that God is. And God works alone. And the sower, he never gets tired and he never gives up to the task that needs to be done. 
God knows that much seed falls by the wayside. But a great harvest will be his when the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of Jesus Christ, his son. Christ is also the sower. Did he not appear as the great teacher, the divine apostle of the gospel? The Holy Spirit is also a sower. He inspires people to be sowers of the seed. The Spirit, like the wind, blows. Every breath of the Holy Spirit is the Word of God. Every breath. We as Christians, we should know what it is like to have the Spirit touch us and arouse us and to scatter the seed. That should be the desire in our heart as a Christian, to want to scatter the seed, to scatter the Word, to share our faith with those all around us. Every Christian should be a sore. When Jesus was commissioning his disciples, Christ spoke of the hearts of men as the field and the gospel as the seed to be cast everywhere. In the last part of Matthew, before Jesus, he went back to be with his father. He told all of those 500 that were there and his disciples. He said to go ye and make disciples among all nations. What Jesus began to teach, the apostles continued teaching. The apostle Paul regarded his whole ministry as sowing of spiritual things. The Apostle Paul, he, he wanted to do that and he knew that God had called him to do that and he was going to do it. And from the time of his remarkable conversion, Paul knew that he was a chosen vessel for sowing the precious seed of the gospel into the human hearts wherever the opening arised, whether it was Jews or Gentiles. You see, the Apostle Paul, he went and made the, those missionary journeys and he went into towns and into the cities to spread the seed because God had called him. Jesus had personally spoke through him and told him, you are my chosen vessel. You are to go and spread the seed, the word of God. He knew that. We are to do the same thing. We were saved to serve and to sow. In comparison to the size of the field, the sores are few. God wants us to pray that he will send forth more sores into the field. All people, not just preachers and teachers, are to be sores. A little child may drop a seed as effectively as a man. The wind may carry it and accomplish as much as if an angel had planted it. The Lord gives us this promise. He who goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again and rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. When was the last time that you prayed and you wept over a lost friend? You really prayed and wept over them. Not just once, but day after day you prayed for them. If we truly spent the time in prayer praying for our lost friends, relatives, and neighbors and really wept over them, we would see precious seeds of harvest. We would see new life. We need to do that. The greatest service that we can give is by sowing a good seed of the word by our life and our lips. All ministers of the word who are called by the spirit have a responsibility as sowers. And at the same time, all Christian parents, elders and lay pastors, and even you share that same responsibility to spread and scatter the seed, the word of God. Each one of us must realize that life or death, heaven or hell, may depend upon the gospel. Just as the farmer 
souls and works. We as Christians, we must be sowing in season and out of season, devoted, yielding, heartily, entirely, and sincerely to the greatest of all tasks, telling others about Jesus Christ and the love of Jesus. All we have to do is so. It is beyond our power to make the seed grow. We cannot do that. It takes rain. It takes the showers. They have to come and the sun must come up before the seed can change. When you tell someone about Jesus and they reject him, it's not your fault. Our job is to go and tell. The Holy Spirit is the one that will do the sowing. Remember that. Our job is to go and tell. <clears throat> Let the Holy Spirit do his job. And Jesus is the one that will change their lives. Are you a lazy farmer who sits around the house? Are you one that goes out into the field and works? And works faithfully. We must work for night is coming. You see, Jesus is calling each one of us into his service to sow the seeds of eternal life in the hearts of all people. All people, regardless of who they are. Into all people. If the Holy Spirit has spoke to you today and you know that you haven't been sowing the seed and you know you need to do that, you need to commit yourself to the Lord to say, Lord, I'm going to do the best I can. I'm going to tell people about Jesus. I'm going to hand out those little pamphlets and invite people to my church. I'm going to talk to people and invite them. I'm not just going to, to do this, but I'm going to live the life of a Christian by my lips and by my life. I'm going to follow him each and every day. Maybe you're here today and you've never asked Jesus to come in your heart. And you want that seed to be planted deep in your heart. You want it to take root and you want to be saved. You want to have the assurance of your salvation. You want to know that when you die, you'll go to heaven. You can do that by simply praying and saying, Jesus, I know you died on that old rugged cross for my sins. I want to be forgiven. I want you to come in my heart right now. You can pray a simple prayer like this. Dear Jesus, I know, Lord, I'm a sinner. Right now, Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and change my life and forgive me of all my sins. I put my faith and my trust in you. I accept you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that prayer today, He will save you and come in your heart. He did. And if you did that, back there on that table where we have our offering bucket, there's a little orange slip like this. It says, this is my decision today. I prayed to receive Christ as my Savior this morning. You check that. It says on here, I'd like to join this cowboy church. If you'd like to join this church, you check that. You fill that out. If you have a prayer need or any other need, you fill that out. Put your name, your information, and the phone number, and I'll call you and love to talk with you about that. You do that for us. You can hand it to me or you can put it in that offering box, okay? Thank y'all for being here today. And remember next week and invite someone to come back. Keep inviting people, all right? Do that today, would you? All right, man. Thank you. Again. Just can't wait to get off the road again. The life we love is going to church with all our friends. We can't wait to get off the road again. Off the road again. Like a band of Christians, we go down the highway. We're the best of friends. Sister.
singing songs that I'm just driving away to sit. We can't wait to get on the road again. And we can't wait to get on the road again. Thank you. Hope to see y'all next Sunday.